Welcome to the final part of a four-part narrated virtual tour series of U.S. military aircraft exhibited in the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum's Udvar Hazi Center. Known as the Frog for its amphibian-like appearance, the Boeing CH-46 Sea Knight served as the U.S. Marine Corps' primary assault helicopter with over four decades of active service. It was the Marines' first turbine-powered assault helicopter, and it proved well-suited to the challenging environment of South Vietnam, where it began its operations in 1966. At the end of its U.S. military operations in Vietnam, over 100 Sea Knights had been lost to enemy fire. Since then, Sea Knights served in nearly every major American military action and supported dozens of smaller operations, ranging from embassy evacuations to humanitarian and disaster relief. The U.S. Navy retired the Sea Knights on 24 September 2004, replacing it with the MH-60S Seahawk. Beginning in April 2011, the Navy Fleet Readiness Center East began refurbishing retired U.S. Marine Corps CH-46Es for service with the United States Department of State Air Wing. CH-46s in Afghanistan were used by Embassy Air for secure transport of State Department personnel. Seven of the CH-46s were rendered unusable and abandoned at Kabul Airport following the 2021 evacuation from Afghanistan. One of the abandoned Sea Knights took part in Operation Frequent Wind, the evacuation of the South Vietnam Embassy in Saigon exactly 46 years prior. The museum's aircraft wears a special heritage paint scheme used in its final year of service that evokes its extensive Vietnam War service, including a mission that resulted in the award of a Navy Cross. No reconnaissance aircraft in history has operated in more hostile airspace or with such complete impunity than the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. It is the fastest aircraft propelled by air-breathing engines. Earlier, Lockheed Aircraft Corporation's subsonic U-2 reconnaissance aircraft was an able platform, but the Air Force recognized that its relatively slow speed made it vulnerable to Soviet interceptors. The next reconnaissance aircraft was Lockheed's A-12s, flown by CIA pilots that operated under the Oxcart program. Beginning in the spring of 1968, the Air Force took over CIA's A-12 missions, flying the SR-71. The Blackbird was designed to fly deep into hostile territory, avoiding interception with its tremendous speed and high altitude. Experience gained from the A-12 program convinced the Air Force that flying the SR-71 safely required two crew members, a pilot and a reconnaissance systems officer. In addition to an array of advanced high-resolution cameras, the aircraft could also carry equipment designed to record the strength, frequency, and wavelength of signals emitted by communications and sensor devices such as radar. By the time it became operational, orbiting reconnaissance satellites replaced manned aircraft for gathering intelligence from sites deep within Soviet territory. Since satellites could not cover every geopolitical hotspot, the Blackbird remained a vital tool for global intelligence gathering. As the performance of space-based surveillance systems grew, along with the effectiveness of ground-based air defense networks, the Air Force started to lose enthusiasm for the expensive program and ceased SR-71 operations in January 1990. Despite protests by military leaders, Congress revived the program in 1995. Continued wrangling over operating budgets, however, soon led to its final termination. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration retained two SR-71As and one SR-71B for high-speed research projects and flew these airplanes until 1999. This particular SR-71 spent 24 years in active Air Force service and accrued a total of 2,801.1 hours of flight time. 
The Bell AH-1 Cobra was the first purpose-built helicopter gunship to enter military service. It was the mainstay of U.S. Army attack aviation from its combat debut in South Vietnam during 1967 until replaced by the AH-64 Apache in the 1980s and 90s. Typically, the Cobra provided fire support for ground forces and escorted transport helicopters, in addition to other roles, including aerial rocket artillery battalions in the two air mobile divisions. They also formed hunter-killer teams by pairing with OH-6A Cayuse Scout helicopters, a team normally comprised of a single OH-6 flying slow and low to find enemy forces. If the OH-6 drew fire, the Cobra would strike at the then-revealed enemy. While flying this aircraft on August 15, 1971, Captain Alan Butler held off enemy forces attempting to overrun South Vietnamese Marines and received the Silver Star for his action. During 1989, Army Cobras participated in Operation Just Cause, the U.S. invasion of Panama operating alongside its eventual successor in the U.S. service, the Boeing AH-64 Apache. Versions of the Cobra continue to serve in the U.S. Marine Corps and the armed forces of many nations. The Grumman Aircraft Corporation's F-14 Tomcat is a supersonic, twin-engine, variable swept-wing, two-place strike fighter. Primary missions include precision strike against ground targets, air superiority, and fleet air defense. As a strike fighter, the Tomcat could deploy an assortment of air-to-ground ordnance in various configurations while simultaneously carrying the AIM-7, AIM-9, and AIM-54 air-to-air -air missiles. The F-14 has a lantern targeting system that allows delivery of various laser-guided bombs for precision strikes on air-to-ground combat missions and for battle damage assessment. One of the routine tasks Tomcats performed was intercepting aircraft that approached U.S. carrier groups too closely. Soviet strategic bombers and maritime reconnaissance aircraft regularly patrolled near U.S. carriers during the Cold War and were often escorted away by them. Tomcats conducted air-to-air -air and reconnaissance missions with the U.S. Navy until the 1990s, when it was also employed as a long-range strike fighter. They performed combat air patrol in protection of U.S. carrier battle groups and coalition forces deploying in Saudi Arabia during Operation Desert Shield. The Dwight D. Eisenhower and Independence Carrier Battle Groups, both of which had four F-14 squadrons, were the only U.S. assets capable of immediately responding to the Iraq invasion of Kuwait and to deter any incursions into Saudi Arabia in August 1990. Following Operation Desert Storm, Tomcats patrolled the no-fly zones that were established over Iraq for Operation Provide Comfort, Southern Watch, and Northern Watch. They performed combat air patrol, fighter escort, aerial reconnaissance, and air interdiction missions in support of these operations until the Iraq invasion in 2003. It saw considerable action in the Mediterranean Sea and Persian Gulf and was used as a strike platform in the Balkans, Afghanistan, and Iraq until its final deployment with the United States in 2006. In the mid-1970s, NASA developed the Oblique Wing Research Aircraft, a small, remotely piloted aircraft to investigate the aerodynamic and flight characteristics of oblique wings. Its small, asymmetrical wing can pivot between 60 and 90 degrees around a central point on a fuselage. The subsonic, propeller-driven, proof-of-concept aircraft was built as a first step to test a NASA theory that a supersonic transport with an oblique wing would have twice the fuel efficiency of a conventional supersonic airliner. Test results encouraged NASA to build a manned oblique wing aircraft that confirmed the design's low-speed flight characteristics, but adverse handling at sharp sweep angles made the approach less attractive. 
the Bell XV-15 tilt rotor technology demonstrator had rotor pylons that tilted from vertical to horizontal, allowing it to take off vertically and operate at speeds up to 345 miles per hour. It served from 1979 through 2003, demonstrating operations under a wide range of conditions and logged 700 hours of testing. Its success encouraged Bell and the U.S. Marine Corps to develop a scaled-up tilt rotor, the MV-22, as a replacement for marine transport helicopters. General Atomic's MQ-1 Predator and other remotely piloted aircraft systems consist of an air vehicle and ground control equipment connected to the air vehicle by a radio and satellite data links. While no one flies on the Predator and it often cruises under the control of an autopilot, most of its functions occur at the hands of a pilot, sensor operator, and mission intelligence coordinator in the ground control station. A feature of the Predator was the ability of its operators to fly it remotely and fire precision weapons in real time from ground stations on the opposite side of the planet. While air strikes, cruise missile strikes, and special operation forces were the primary mode of American operations against terrorist organizations before 2001, they often engendered significant resistance and resentment in local populations and thus were not politically sustainable. Because predators operated out of sight, were unmanned, and their missiles caused less unintended death and destruction than other means, the MQ-1 and its further development, the MQ-9 Reaper, operated with less political resistance. For American policymakers, military commanders, and a majority of the American public, drone strikes represented the most efficient and effective means of keeping deadly terrorists at bay and did so with no risk to American service personnel. U.S. Air Force Predator production ended in 2011 with 268 airframes completed. The United States Air Force retired the Predator in 2018, replacing it with the Reaper. The McDonnell Douglas F.A. 18 Hornet is a multi-role Navy combat jet. As the F.A. designation indicates, the aircraft performs in both fighter and attack roles. The Hornet entered operational service with the Marine Corps January 7, 1983, and with the Navy on July 1, 1984. The initial fleet reports were complementary, indicating the Hornet was extraordinarily reliable, a major change from its predecessor, the F-4J. The U.S. Navy's Blue Angel Flight Demonstration Squadron switched to the Hornets in 1986. They first saw combat action in April 1986 when Hornets from the USS Coral Sea flew suppression of enemy air defense missions against Libyan air defenses during Operation Prairie Fire and an attack on Benghazi. During the Gulf War of 1991, the Navy deployed 106 Hornets and the Marine Corps deployed 84. F-A-18s flew 4,551 sorties with 10 Hornets damaged including three losses, one of which was a confirmed loss to enemy fire. The Hornet demonstrated its versatility and reliability during Operation Desert Storm, shooting down enemy fighters and subsequently bombing enemy targets with the same aircraft on the same mission. It broke records for tactical aircraft in availability, reliability, and maintainability. Both U.S. Navy and Marine Hornets were used in Operation Southern Watch and over Bosnia and Kosovo in the 1990s. U.S. Navy Hornets flew during Operation Enduring Freedom in 2001 from carriers operating in the North Arabian Sea. They were used during Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003, operating from aircraft carriers as well as from air bases in Kuwait. Later in the conflict, U.S. Marine Corps Hornets operated from bases within Iraq. F.A. 18 Hornets were retired from the U.S. Navy in 2019, replaced by the F.A. 18 Super Hornet. The 
Lockheed Martin X-35B is the technology demonstrator for the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, a stealthy, supersonic, multi-role fighter. After meeting the goals of the conventional takeoff version, the X-35A was modified to the X-35B for testing of short takeoff vertical landing features. Stealth is a key aspect of the F-35's design. The radar cross-section is minimized through careful shaping of the airframe and the use of radar-absorbent materials. Visible measures to reduce radar cross-section include alignment of edges, serration of skin panels, and the masking of the engine face and turbine. The aircraft also has reduced infrared and visual signatures, as well as strict control of radio frequency emitters to prevent their detection. There are three operational F-35 Lightning II versions. The F-35A conventional variant assigned to the U.S. Air Force is the most numerous. The short takeoff vertical landing F-35B variant is used by the U.S. Marine Corps. The U.S. Navy's F-35C carrier variant includes larger wing and control surfaces, foldable wings, additional wingtip ailerons, and strengthened internal structures to absorb the punishment of catapult launches and arrested landings. I hope you enjoyed this narrated virtual tour of U.S. military aircraft displayed in the Udvar Hasi Center of the National Air and Space Museum. The museum is in Chantilly, Virginia, outside of Washington, D.C., is free to visit, but there is a $15 parking fee. If you would like to tour other aircraft in this series, convenient links are in the description section below this video. Here are YouTube's suggested links on similar topics that you may enjoy.